Runs with Courage, Chapter 9, Punishment. After several days, Pinchfinger finally stopped following Miss Beatrice everywhere, and Miss Beatrice seemed happier. Today we have a surprise for you, she announced one afternoon after our meal break. This afternoon, instead of lessons, we will sew. My heart fluttered with excitement. Not for long, I had learned that the white word for sewing was something like the beating I did with mother. As a young child, I had spent hours watching mother grow pictures beneath her fingers with beads. She had spent years teaching me what she knew. Some day I hoped to be as skilled as she was in both beading and quill work. But since... Coming to school, I had not been allowed to do either. I hoped I remembered how. Miss Beatrice placed small baskets of beads on the table and began to stand or hand out the needles and thread, humming softly as she did this. Take this, Sarah, she said, handing me a needle. Be careful with it. Don't poke yourself. I studied the metal needle. I had only worked with needles made of bone. This was smaller and didn't feel as as if it fit my fingers, but it didn't matter. I was so excited to bead that I knew I could learn how to use it. Oh, not you, William, I heard Miss Beatrice says. This is women's work. Brother Huber is here today to fix the roof. You will help him. We need you or we need to get the roof ready for winter. I glanced over to see William slouching in his usual way. He had been correct about the presidents and the great white father, and for some reason this made me angry. How could a boy so slow be so wise to know this? And how could I not have known this? I realized I was more angry with myself than with him. I shook the anger away, looking back at the needle and thread, imagining what kind of patterns I could make. I would create a star, something small that I could give bare. And here is the best part, children, Miss Beatrice unrolled a long piece of cloth that the whites called burlap. Won't it be grand, she said. What is that, Moonawake whispered to me. I shrugged. I had never seen burlap close up before, and it was cut in such a long strip. What is it? Boxtall asked. It's a banner, Miss Beatrice said. Come closer. She beckoned, beckoned us to gather around. There is a name of our school. She pointed to the words. I could see the outline faintly in chalk. All Saints Miss Missionary School. Brother Huber has arranged for a photograph to be taken. Isn't that grand? A photograph. It will be our first. So we want to make sure that everyone knows the name of this special place, our special school. You will outline the words with pretty colors of thread so we can read it. It's called embroidery. I found a few beads that you can add to. Not many, but they will do. Miss Beatrice laid the banner out on the floor and looked at us expectantly. Now come and find a place to start working, girls. I stared at the banner, not wanting to find a place to work. I wanted to bead as I had with my mother. I didn't want to do this embroidery. I didn't want to help with a banner of the white words with the metal needle. Here, sit next to me, Waxtall, Waxtall po pulled at my sleeve. It will be fun, she said. I sighed and sat down. At least we don't have to do lessons, she whispered. Oh, but I forgot scissors, Miss Beatrice explain exclaimed. They are in the office. Sarah, Anna, will you get them, please? They are on the desk. Yes, Miss Beatrice, Waxtall answered and led me out of the school. What is an office, I said, or I asked as we walked through the church into the room on to the side. This, she said. I looked around fascinated. Inside the small room were a desk and a wooden chair and many bookshelves filled with books. I didn't know there could be so many books in one place. What are you girls doing? Miss Margaret was in the doorway frowning. You shouldn't be in here alone. Miss Beatrice asked us to bring scissors. Walks tall answered, looking respectfully down at the floor. There are so many books, I murmured. Yes, Miss Margaret said, her banner brightening. Knowledge is the foundation of learning. And who is that, I asked, pointing to a picture of a woman who's, who had a circle of light around her head. That is Mary, the mother of Jesus, Miss Margaret said. We've talked about this in church lessons. I did remember hearing about mother of Jesus, but I'd never seen a picture of her. She looked sad. Was it because someone was hurting her son? I continued to look around, pleased that I could read so many of the white words that were on the books and pictures. But when I got to a small sign hanging above the desk, I froze. I read the words carefully and then read them again. The wooden sign was small, but the letters were large, simple, and clear. Kill the Indian, save the man. I read it again. Kill the Indian, save the man. I couldn't look away. That is a very special plaque, Miss Margaret said, noticing that I was staring. Colonel Pratt gave it to us. Miss Agnes and I had the chance to visit his school. It is similar to ours, although his is much bigger. His is such an inspiration, a true inspiration. But what does it mean? I whispered. Kill the Indian. I couldn't stop staring. It means that to be civilized, you cannot be a savage, Miss Margaret explained. You must get rid of the savage so you can fit into society. 
I could only stare, feeling angry and confused. Is there trouble, girls? What's taking so long? Miss Beatrice's voice sounded from behind. You shouldn't have let those girls in here by themselves, Miss Margaret was saying. Who knows what kind of trouble they could have caused. My anger exploded and I reached for the plaque, ripping it down from the wall and breaking it over my knee. What are you doing? Miss Margaret screeched, jumping towards me. Stop! Sarah, stop! Miss Beatrice said, reaching for the plaque. I looked down and realized I was holding its broken pieces and threw them on the floor. Miss Margaret, what is going on in here? Pastor Huber, or Huber had appeared. My plaque! My plaque! She sobbed. Waxtall disappeared from the room. I told you not to let those heathen children back here, Pastor uh, Huber and uh, said and grabbed my arm, yanking hard, pulling me out of the office. A belt appeared, and he began hitting me wherever he could reach, spitting words out between the hard thwacks. We'll, uh, we'll teach you, little savage. Think it's natural to break anything? And from someone who is trying to help you? My skin burned, but I would not cry. I would stare straight ahead with dignity. You can just sit here and think about what you have done, Pastor Huber said. Uh, dragging me into a small, darkened room. The cloaks he wore during church service hung limply along the wall. Heathen children. He was still muttering as he locked the door. I curled into a corner and hugged my knees to my chest, placed my arms uh, stung, or places on my arms stung, and my legs hurt. I wished for cousin to be locked in the closet with me. If she were here with me, I would knew she would find a way to make me feel better. I closed my eyes and imagined the sound of her voice. I pretended that she was sitting right next to me, and I was not completely alone. It felt like hours later when I heard the sound of the lock turning in the door. Light flooded in, hurting my eyes. Once they adjusted, I could see Miss Margaret and, the past and Pastor Huber peering in. I had been crouched on the floor so long it was difficult to stand. Pastor Huber reached in, pulled me out by the arm. It hurt where he touched me, but I didn't cry out. Miss Margaret looked at me and gasped. There had been a small trickle of blood down on one arm from, uh, from where I had been hit with the belt. An angry bruise was blooming on my other arm. Sarah, I hope you learned your lesson, Pastor Huber said. I looked him in the eye. I could not look down at the floor. I said nothing. You will apologize to Miss Margaret, he thundered. Miss Margaret, I said, I'm sorry, but I wasn't sorry. I wish a plaque would be added to the same fire the boy William used to burn my clothing. Oh, Sarah, was all Miss Margaret said. She reached towards me and I flinched. Oh, Sarah, she repeated. I went straight to our sleeping room without dinner. I lay down on my sleeping space. The girls arrived later, walking in quietly, as if I was sick. Four winds, walks tall, said, coming to my side, but I didn't respond. She sat down, patting me lightly on the back. I didn't move as the other girls changed into night clothes. Miss Beatrice came for night prayers, and I stayed on my sleeping space, but my back turned away from her. No one insisted that I join them. The lanterns, lanterns were blown out, and I was turned to find the moon through the, uh, through the window space.